Hi, I'm Sonia DeBell, and we're here in Windsor with David Hamilton. David is a scientist, uh, an inspirational speaker, and an author of five books. Um, five books that have been published through Hay House. So you um, can go onto the website and find them there. And um, David, well, nice to be with you today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. <laughs> pleasure. We actually. Um, we went to a talk with um, Alternatives, um, do a talk with David, and it was an hour and a half talk, and in that hour and a half, it was really just powerful and captured all of us. It was all to do with mind um, and how you can change your reality, and really you can, one of my favorite things, which is so inspirational for me, is um, how the mind can heal the body, which is one of your best sellers. Yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, well, it, I wrote How Your Mind Can Heal Your Body because uh, I, I started out really in this area uh, as a scientist uh, helping to develop cardiovascular and cancer drugs in the pharmaceutical industry and I became so motivated with studying the mind-body interactions because so many people would recover from, from illness through the placebo effect, not just in my field but in, in other areas, other research areas I was also exploring. Uh, and I th so I actually resigned from the pharmaceutical industry and started properly studying these mind-body interactions and, and then began to give some talks, public talks in, in the field and that's when I started to find a lot of people coming to the talks were so interested in the mind-body, not because they wanted to learn how to use that mind, but because they wanted to share with other people how they've actually recovered from an illness. And I found people would tell me their story, like I had this particular disease or illness, and I used my mind uh, to facilitate the healing. And, and I would say, so what did you do? And it turned out that the majority of people that I spoke with actually used the same basic principles. And those principles were that they imagined inside the body and they imagined what a disease or ill state would actually look like. So they had an internal image of illness and then they would imagine instead an internal state of wellness. And all they would really do is change the picture from illness into wellness. And they would either use their hands, you know, a tumour for example, people would sandpaper it down. And I'm not saying use the mind instead of taking any medical intervention, but in integrated medicine, integrate everything, use your mind in addition to whatever else you're doing in there, sandpapering a tumour down for example or steam cleaning the interior of their blood vessels uh, and then they get to a picture in their mind, an image of all well, completely, you know, no tumour there or perfectly smooth, clear uh, blood vessels and they would do it repetitively over and over and over and again. And that's the key. And that's the key, yeah. Just keep on doing, keep it. On doing it. And for those people who um, say, oh, I can't imagine, or I don't have a great imagination to do this, or visualisation, what would you say to them? How can they do this? Yeah, it, well, it actually turns out that it's not so much, it's not so important the pictures that you use, because everyone imagines in their own way, and some people are very visual, some people are more kind of tactile. I mean, I, 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 I've once, I was asked by my partner and her mum when they were teasing me about how men don't pay attention to things, and that I couldn't tell them the colour of the carpet in the house. But I, I could actually tell them how it felt in my socks and where there was a little lump in the floor. So I, I tend to be quite tactile in how, how I imagine things. So people use all different modalities to imagine wellness. And some people it is very visual. Other people it's very much how does it feel as I'm sanding this tumour down? How does it feel as I'm restoring wellness to the interior of my blood vessels, for example? So whatever way you imagine, you're absolutely correct. In fact, you can only do it right as long as you're intending to get well, you can only do it right. God, that's good. You can only do it right. And the, uh, I think the ultimate thing is, is the mind, well, actually, one of the things you spoke about was how the mind doesn't know the difference between what it thinks is real and what it imagines. So if the two are the same, do you want to talk about that as yeah. a scientist? Yeah, well, this is something that I, I use some of the scientific research in this area mm. as, a, I guess, a framework to, to suggest this is probably something that, that's contributing very much to people's ability to heal themselves. Yeah. Uh, and basically, you can do experiments where you perhaps move your fingers repetitively and have your brain examined, scanned every day. And what you will find is the area of the brain 
that's linked with your finger muscles is increasing in size and volume. And it's called neuroplasticity. You, the brain changes in response to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if you just imagine making those same movements, for example, like playing a piano or imagining playing the piano, yeah. if you imagine the same thing, then your brain will change in the same way. And if you take the scans from physical playing the notes and compare them with the, the scans of, of imagining doing the same thing and you hold them together, no one would actually be able to tell you which was which because they would be much the same. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I use that as a, I guess as a framework to build around this, this idea that yes the mind can actually facilitate healing in the body. If you imagine the same thing repetitively, just like imagining moving your fingers repetitively, then maybe that, has, that can exert a health So behavior. instead of connecting the mind to the illness, let the mind just connect to the yourself in a well state over and over again. Absolutely. And so the mind eventually doesn't know the difference and it makes this repetitive picture that you keep thinking your reality. Yeah, and you can as well as doing this, you know, gradually changing yeah. illness into wellness, what another popular strategy is people just repetitively see or imagine the body in its well state so that the a tumor gone or the blood vessels completely beautifully soft and yeah. clear and every time they imagine the condition they just imagine it in its well state and, they, and that might happen 20 times a day they imagine it well they imagine it well and again it's repetition so they're not actually changing illness into wellness they're just holding the idea of wellness but again repetition 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 that's, that's the key amazing. Yeah. that's amazing well that um is David Hamilton for you. So the great thing is, is that we have the science backing up all this um, philosophy, which is really amazing. And the, the books are great. So do go to Hay House. And the one that I love the most is How the Mind Can Heal the Body. How your mind can heal your body. No, <laughs> how your mind, how, how your particular individual mind can heal your body, which is amazing. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Namaste. Namaste. My pleasure.